What's up guys, Doe here and I'm bringing you the second beginner tutorial for After Effects. Let's jump right into it. Today we're going to be covering transformation, keyframing, adding effects, layers, and the blending modes. So this is where we left off the pre first tutorial, part one. And so I taught you some of the basics, now we are at the composition, but we can't really start editing it. So, let me go down to transformation with you. I think I covered it briefly last tutorial. I don't remember though. Transformation's right here. You click on the clip, you open it up, and there is a transform tab. You're going to open that up, and then you are given all of these transformation um, x, y values. So, um, I'm going to start off with the anchor point. Anchor point, if you look at this little dot, and then, yeah. See, that is going to be the very center, and these little points around it, you can kind of move around. It's just like positioning, I think. I'm pretty sure it's just like positioning. I'm going to control Z that. And positioning obviously does the same thing. Scaling. I'm going to cover this, this link thingy. It looks like a chain. It means that your dimensions will stay the same. X and Y, if you bring up the X, it'll bring up the Y with you, so it'll stay in the same proportion. But if you unclick it and then stretch, you can like stretch it out. You can stretch it up. And yeah, so when you unclick the chain, you can do one at a time. Um, you can do one X value without affecting the Y. So if I click 110 on the X only with it linked, It'll bring up the Y too because it's linked. But if I bring this down to 100 again, after uh, unlinking it, of course, it's still at 110 for the Y because it's unlinked. So I'll bring that both down. I'll link it again. Um, now rotation. Um, well, you can just play around with this, but this doesn't do anything because it doesn't show that it's doing anything because it basically turns it 360 degrees. So if I do one. It turned 360 degrees, but you can't see a difference because it's already turned 360 degrees. So I'm going to put it at zero. I'm going to bring this up. It will rotate clockwise. If you do it negative, counterclockwise. So I will rotate this 359. Right there. And you see it's basically back to normal. I go, I'll type in 360. And instead of having 360 degrees, it just puts one times and then 1x plus 0 which is what we had before now bring that back to 0 now the opacity I covered this last tutorial I did really I uh, yeah I remember covering it last wait did I I don't know I did the first tutorial like five times over and over again but in case I didn't here it is it brings down the brightness now it it looks like it's bringing up the brightness because I have a white background I can change that though Composition, composition settings, background color, I'm going to make that black. So as you see here, it is bringing down the opacity, the brightness, and yeah. So I covered transformation with you guys, and I'm going to keyframe. And I'm going to keyframe with transformations, okay? So let's, for example, I'm going to make a basic transition. I'm going to drag this all the way down. And to make a keyframe, you have to click on the stopwatch. So you click on it. When this little yellow diamond comes up, that means you made your first keyframe. Um, I'm going to drag my mover over one second, and then if you change these coordinates in any way, it'll automatically make a keyframe. But if you don't want to do that, you can just click where the add or remove keyframe button is right here. It'll make a keyframe for you. But I'm going to delete that. I don't I don't have to, but I'm going this transition, I'm just gonna drag this up back up. It'll drag back up. There. 360 is where it should be. And now that's keyframing. Now if we go back in time and we go forward, it drags the clip up. And there we go. It starts. Boom. So that's keyframing. Um also real quick, um, you click when it's yellow, you can click there and it'll add or remove keyframe. So if a keyframe's there, you remove it. And if you want to go to the next keyframe, obviously there's a go to the next keyframe. And then uh, it only works when it's bolded. Sorry, I have a stuffy nose. It only works when it's bolded. So if you click when it's bolded, and it'll take you to the next keyframe. I'm going to be 
delete that. So now we have a normal clip. Um, now, I'm bringing up the opacity back to 100. Touch out a keyframe. Now, adding effects. You can add effects a couple ways. You can go to effect, and you have all of these effects. I have a lot of third-party effects, like Magic Bullet, FX Factory Pro, even though mine's only a trial version. And also, you can go to your effects and presets tab, and you can, if you know the effect, you can type it in. Um, say CC Lens, you can just bring it in. You can also keyframe this too, so I'm going to bring up the size, and bring it back down. Say we have a black screen, I will keyframe it. I'll move over a second, and I will make it full ish. So if we go back down, it is at zero, and let's RAM preview this actually. I taught you this yesterday, right? RAM preview. RAM preview this, and it opens up. Transition. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to delete that though. Season lens delete. Out of that, just gives me more space. And yeah, so that's how you add an effect. You can do that with anything. Um, I can let's say I want to add in a twister. I'll make a twister tutorial later. But if I want to add in a twister, there it is. Um, keyframe. Um, everything is keyframeable. So. You won't need to worry about that it being any more complicated than this. Layers. How much? I have three and a half minutes left. Okay, so I'll cover layers pretty quickly. If you want to add a layer, you can go up to Layer, New, and then there's a text layer, which I taught, I told you guys about yesterday. There's solids. Um, you can click it, and then you can make any color solid you want. Let's say I want a red. It makes a solid. Simple as that. Um, you can make shapes. You can create anything you want with solids. Um, you you can be creative with this. Like I can make a target for Call of Duty, or if you're editing real life stuff, you can do other stuff. But you can be as creative as you need to, as you want with um, solids, because that's what they're there for. They're there for your creativity. So new, and then we can add light. We can add a camera. I'm not gonna go over these two because I mean, for my style of editing, which is COD, it's pointless. No object. This kinda is complicated. It's hard to. It's really hard to explain. But you usually use it whenever you make a um, like whenever you're wanting to affect more than one layer. Like let's say you want to shift this over and you want to shift another clip with it. So you want to make a really smooth transition and you're kind of lazy. You can parent. This is a parent tool. You can parent them both to the null. And let's say you want the null to transform. Uh, position here and then one second later you want position over here it will drag both of the clips over there over or like all layers that you want over there so it's kind of like an anti-lazy thing like or it's for the lazy guys is what I'm trying to say but it's really nice to have and it's really efficient that's just uh, an example of how to use it and let's go to new let's go to I won't cover shape layer I'll only cover, lastly, adjustment layer. Adjustment layer is good if you want to add effects. It is an effect layer. Let's say I want to add... Actually, I just downloaded something. Let's see if it works. Um, yeah. It is a color correction that I downloaded from him. And it left... Nah, this is the first time I actually opened it. And it looks kind of chic. Very creative. Thank you, Baker. I will put his link in the description. You can check him out. He does After Effects tutorials just like me. It's with COD and he is very good in them. I learn a lot from him. So adjustment layers are just for adding effects. Um, you can, I mean, if I transform it, it doesn't really move. Like, it moves the, it moves the adjustment layer, which is obviously where the effect is on, so if I move this over, it will move the effect, and so this kind of looks weird, and I don't know why it's doing that. I think I did something. But I'm running out of time, guys. Uh, I'm almost at my 10-minute mark. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment. If you have a question, ask me. Or go to my channel and comment the question. PM me. There's, a, there's plenty of ways to contact me. And check out my channel. Maybe subscribe if you want to see more of my stuff. Next tutorial is a color flashing tutorial. So be ready for that. And maybe after that I'll do syncing. But that's the, I'm finished with the... Finished with the basic tutorials for now, I'll move on to some other stuff now. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.